Hi there. This is the start of the statistics part of this course. Statistics is about data. Analyzing data, making inference based on data, making predictions about the future based on the data. Here you see some data. You don't know what these numbers mean, I'll tell you later, but have a look at them anyhow. Is there a value around which most of the numbers are concentrated? Can you divide the data set into two parts that contain half of the observations? Hard to answer, right? In this video, you will learn three graphical tools that enable you to answer these questions easily, namely histograms, kernel density estimates, and the empirical distribution function. Let's first describe what the data are. Here you see the old faithful geyser at Yellowstone National Park in the USA. The geyser has eruptions of hot water several times a day. The durations of these eruptions were recorded during 15 days. They were measured in seconds. What you can see from the data set is that the eruptions vary in length. This indicates there is some randomness involved. What can you say about this randomness? To make things a little more organized, let's order the set in ascending order. Then you get the following ordered data set and hey, you can now immediately say that the observations vary from 96 to 306 seconds. Now look at the two middle elements of the data set. They are both equal to 240, which is much closer to the maximum value of 306 than to the minimum value of 96. Can you conclude the data are asymmetric? Then there is the fact that geological experts believe that two different kinds of eruptions occur, longer ones and shorter ones, both with typical durations. So around these typical values, you would expect some higher concentration of observed durations. What are these typical values? Here is a histogram of the data. How do you draw such a histogram? First, divide the range of the data into intervals. In this case, let's take intervals of a width of 30 seconds. Denote the intervals by B1, B2 until B10. The histogram is a function that is constant on these intervals. So in order to draw the histogram, you only need to determine the value of the function on these intervals. This height is obtained by counting the number of observations with values in that interval divided by the total number of observations times the length of the interval. Since the area of the histogram on a certain bin equals the length of the interval times its height, of course, you see that it is equal to the fraction of data points with values in the interval bi. As a consequence, the total area under the histogram equals 1. Here is the histogram of the geyser data again. As an example, let's compute the height of the histogram above the bin running from 210 to 240 seconds. Of the 272 observations, 36 belong to this interval. So, the height should be 36 divided by 272 times 30, which is equal to 0 0.0044. Now, what happens if you choose another width for the intervals? Well, let's see. Here's a histogram of the same data with interval width 2. You see you get a messy figure. Here's a histogram of the same data with interval width 5. Here's one with width 10, one with width 30, and one with width 90. You see that the shape of the histograms changes and information about your data set might get lost. For example, if you take the width too large, the fact that there are two peaks in the data set is not visible anymore. It's a matter of experience and of trial and error to find the right width to use. There are also some rules of thumb that have been developed in research that you can use. Now, take a closer look at the histogram of the Geyser data. Can you read from the picture what exactly are the values of the two peak times? No, right? That's why I am now going to introduce kernel density estimates to you. 
Here is the density estimate of the old faithful data. And you immediately see the asymmetry in the data set, of course. But you can also tell what are the typical values of the peak times, close to 120 and to 270. Now, the idea of such a plot is to put a pile of sand around each element of the data set. At places where the points cluster, the sand will pile up. The exact procedure to construct such a plot is too complicated to explain in this video. It is a very computationally intensive operation, but that is not a problem when you take into account the possibilities of computers. I invite you to read more about kernel estimates in your spare time. Finally, let's introduce the empirical distribution function. The value of the empirical distribution function at a point x is equal to the fraction of data points that is smaller than or equal to x. The empirical distribution function is denoted by f sub n, so the formula is this. And here is the empirical distribution function for the old faithful data. Let's see what you can read from this graph. You see there are two very steep slopes in the graph, around 120 and 270. You remember the value of the peaks. Also, you see it starts at zero, left from 96 seconds, which is logical, since there are no measurements smaller than 96. And it climbs up to one at the point 306, where it stays. Also logical, because all data points are smaller or equal to 306 seconds. Here's an exercise to construct a histogram and the empirical distribution function of the data set consisting of the points 1, 2, 3, 3, 3, 5, 6, 9 and 10. Have fun and see you in class.